Now, if we flip the switch, this thing should turn on. Oh, that's so beautiful. So satisfying. Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be doing the Fly Sky mod, actually finalizing it. So I finally finished the design of the mount that'll go on the Fly Sky receiver to take TBS Crossfire modules, actually any kind of module that will support PPM input. For example, the, R the FR Sky R9M is going to work. The TBS Crossfire already works, already tested that. Now the t this one, I've heard it works. So a friend of mine actually told me that yeah, it does take PPM input. So theoretically this, the, this one should work also. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. So I will be going to, I'm going to be modding the Eosheen i6, which is just the normal Flysky i6, not the i6X. Now, if you want to see how to do the i6X, you can watch my previous video. It's just the same thing, just the wires just have to be routed in the same way. So you also on that one have three wires, but they're just differently placed on the board. Check out part one to know where your wire's at. I've actually gone through a couple iterations of the uh, module bay here itself. Now I've also added this button here to reduce the power draw, especially if you're still using FlySky receivers. This will enable and disable the module that is installed. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the trainer port here, which is, as you can tell here, with just two screws. We really don't need this. And if you ever wanted it, you could just put it back. So we're not going to modify anything on this. Also, the way that I've mounted it is actually, I didn't even drill holes. I just went in with this and I just kept twisting it in circles until it went through. And I didn't go through all the way. I, I made the screw finish the rest of the hole so it had a better grip. And then I added nylon standoffs here. This one, I couldn't add anything. It just holds really well. As you can tell, it's that one right there. So these are just M3 holes right here. So there's one, two, three holding it into place. And here's the switch. And I'll have a link to the switch down below. Now, if you take a look in here, I have these little notches sticking out. And the reason for that is, is because we're going to be installing this. Now, the way, the, the way that I created this was I just took these prototyping boards and I just cut a small piece. And uh, I just made sure it aligns perfectly. So if you take a look here, I will link to everything down below also. If you could check those, those greatly support the channel, guys. Um, let me see. All right. So as you can tell here, it fits just perfect. So that's what I wanted here. And, uh, that will be glued right there and right there. So every time you insert a module, that'll be good to go instead of having to take this and then just, you know, put it in your hand and you could do that also. And then just stick it in just in case, uh, a module is a little bit shorter. See, and as you can tell here, we also got this one. Now it's very important to know the orientation. That's the reason why I wanted to tape it. So uh, you don't actually flip the ground in five volt and then you screw up your module here. All right, so what, what do we have to do now? Remove the trainer port. So let's get that started with real quick. It's just two screws to remove this. There we go. Now we have an opened hole. We don't have to make another hole into the transmitter itself here. Next thing we want to do is we want to grab our little adapter here. Now the adapter is very important because the orientation is again, very, very important. And let's just take a look at this here. So if we flip this over, there's a total of five pins here. Now the uppermost pin is going to be PPM. And then the third pin is going to be the five volts and the fourth pin from the top is going to be ground. So make sure you get it in that perfect orientation here. All right. Now the next step, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in my modded fly sky with the wires installed. And I'm going to find V bat. Where is V bat for me? So here's the battery plus, this is not the ground and I'm going to route it through the hole here. And, um, I want to keep extra, just a little bit of extra slack, not too much. So I can, um, if I ever wanted to take this apart, I can easily take it apart like this. So I think that's going to be good. Right about here is going to be totally fine. And that's what I'm going to do here. And this is this V bat is going to go to the switch here. And we're going to install it on the middle pin of the switch. I'll have a link to the switch also down below. If, if you can check those out, those greatly support the channel, guys. I need all the solar I can possibly get. So I'm going to go ahead and turning on, turn on my soldering iron and prepare the switch here. All right, so I've added a little solder on the wire here. And now I'm just going to solder it straight to the middle pin of the switch. There we go. So now we have positive here. And what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and find the positive, which is the red wire here, which is also the third pin down. So here's the positive. And what we want to do is we want to set it up on one of the other legs of the switch here. So when we flick the switch, we get power here. Now I'm going to install it to the bottom one right there. Okay. That's in really good. 
So as you can tell now, we have the positive here, and that is on the middle pin here is the VBAT. So now when we flick the switch, it should give power to the module here. So if you didn't want it, you can easily turn it off, which is really nice to have. Now, actually, I'm going to go ahead and change my mind a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to route the yellow wires that are actually already coming from inside and remove these currently. So I actually put these on for color coding so nobody really messes up what's really going on. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the PPM. Now, PPM is going to be the first one on the first top one here. I'm going to open the case and I'm going to find the PPM, which is right here, as you can tell. If you've watched my previous video, you would know which one. So I'm going to grab my PPM wire, and they're clearly labeled here. All right, so if we take a look here, we had the, there we go, like this. So the top one here is going to be the PPM. Now, if you take a look at the module itself, when you plug it in, the, it's going to be the top one. So the top one is the PPM. So let's go ahead and install this. There we go. And I think I bridged two wires together. Yep, there we go. Well, that's fixed. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the ground here, which is the fourth one down. And let's go ahead and grab the ground wire. All right, now I'm going to install the ground wire since I've prepared it, which was the one next to the 5 volt here. And I'm actually going to redo the 5 volt. All right, so I've routed it to the other way. And actually, no, it was supposed to be that way, but that's totally fine now. Now we're going to go ahead and install the ground, which is right below the VCC here and this is going to be the ground okay all right so the first one up is PPM and then the third one down is going to be the 5 volt and then the fourth one down is going to be ground so now we're all set and done here I'm just gonna pull this a little and now we need to set this up as you can tell like so now don't don't mess up your orientation or you might have a bad day so as you can tell here I think I'm just gonna super glue this right into place here and uh, theoretically, we should be absolutely good to go. All right, guys. So now that's super glued and that's in the place pretty good here. Uh, let's go ahead and test this out. So there we go. It's just it's a little bit higher than expected. I didn't calculate for the width of the PCB, but that's totally fine. And the uh, GitHub and uh, the Thingiverse version here. Oh, it's really good though. In the Thingiverse version uh, of this 3D printed part, I'll have it lifted up slightly to compensate for that PCB. Uh, this little PCB, I think it's like 1.6 millimeters right there. So that's totally fine, but it's still hold right now currently. So I will be setting up my mixer because I will be going to the field now to test the wing with this. So I do have the TBS crossfire on the wing. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and just quickly do our quick tests here. Okay, so it's the moment of truth now. Let's plug in the batteries and hope for the best. There we go. There we go. Close this. And theoretically, like this, it should be off, theoretically. So. Okay. Now, if we flip the switch, this thing should turn on. Oh, that's so beautiful. So satisfying. Now I need to figure out my mixer before I go take it out. So I'll see you guys in the field and um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Hey, what is up guys? And right now I'm in the field. I'm about to test out the FlySky Crossfire module. Now don't forget this thing will work on the R9M, but I haven't tested it. And it'll work on multi-protocol uh, modules that take PPM input. So you'll be able to fly FlySky, Spectrum, all these kinds of other crazy things. So it's going to be pretty interesting. So as you can tell, it looks pretty damn sexy now. So yeah, um, I'm gonna get everything ready. I'm gonna fly my wing since it has a TBS crossfire on it. And um, let's get started. All right guys, so here we have the Fly Sky about to be tested with the FR Sky. I'm oh, sorry, with the, with the Fly Sky with the crossfire module. So let's set this all up. I've learned a little bit more about CG and stuff, but it took me like an hour to figure out how to uh, set up the mixer on this. So let's just see. We're gonna boot this on, and then we're gonna boot up our module. As you can tell there, it's working. And then, so, that is freaking awesome. If you don't believe me, let's just take a look here. There it is, that's the FR Sky TBS Crossfire uh, receiver here. So, let's go ahead. Oh my God, I love this swing so much. Oh shit, I almost killed myself. All right, so I haven't been practicing much, so hopefully this works out great. Let's see. I haven't flown in a while. Awesome. 
Well, I know you now you know it works, so that's really good in that perspective. Oh shit. Are you kidding me? All right, so what happened here is the Ipex port ripped off the TBS Crossfire antenna. And there goes my testing for the day. Well, at least we know how it works, but yeah. What a shame. God damn it. So I guess tomorrow I'll be putting the R9M for testing. Cause this is, this is bullshit to be honest, but what am I gonna do here? At least the antenna didn't rip. No, I need to fix it. I can fix it if I buy the SMD components to fix this thing. Or even better, I can even solder directly to it. So, yeah, maybe we'll do a little repair video here. And, um, yeah, we can just solder directly to it. It ripped off the pads. And we'll see that in the shop in a later video. But, yep, well, it works. That's for sure. I mean, obviously it was working. Um, so, yeah. Don't forget to turn off your module though, because if you turn if you forget to turn off the module, it'll drain the shit out of the battery. So this thing's gonna need a new battery mod, um, because they they just soak up so much battery because of the uh, milliwatts the output. So yeah, well it works, but unfortunately I didn't have a nice little test for you guys. But yep, there we go. All right, guys, and there we go. So it actually works, and just a little bit more about this. So this thing will actually take the R9M. I haven't tested it, though, but if it takes PPM input, it should take the R9M and a bunch of other p modules in here, like uh, the multi-protocol module, which will allow you to bind to FR Sky, Spectrum, Radio Link, some other toys, which is going to be really, really cool on this. So I've already tested the multi-protocol one, and I'll leave it linked down below. This one here, make sure you get this one. Now you get this without the case, but you can also buy the 3D printed case also from Banggood, and you will need that for this, because I didn't make one. Or you could actually even probably print one yourself if you have a printer. There's some on Thingiverse. But yeah, I'll leave a link to the known modules to work with this. Uh, so you can pick them up and everything else is linked down below. It would really be awesome if you guys could support this channel and use those links. They are affiliated and um, yeah, and also on Patreon, that'd be super awesome. A dollar or two a month can go an absolute long way to keep this channel afloat. And I really want to concentrate more on mods and, and creating things more than reviews. I really, I'll still do reviews, but I really want to concentrate on these kinds of things more because it's just a lot more fun and we can uh, take very old hardware and do some crazy cool things with it. There's also more more, more projects planned for the FlySky transmitter here. And um, overall, it's it's a really nice mod, as you can tell. It looks really beautiful. And th in the field, it was green because it was bound to the receiver. Um, so overall, it works really great. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'm sorry I'm late because I told a couple people it was going to be three days, around six days ago. But I just, it was just a... Uh, I had to make a different iteration of the uh, module here and then just to f figure out the way that I want to finally execute it. And it came out really nice, as you can tell here. So we could just remove this and install this and we're good to go. And the super glue just died. Yeah, so basically you put any kind of module you want that takes that allows a PPM input and is not going to be controlled through a serial interface, which these these can be controlled through a serial interface and also PPM and I'm using them on PPM here and this one as well also. So it's going to it's it's a, it's a really nice mod and I'm thinking of more mods for this like I mentioned in the field about a battery mod, but I'm I'm sure there's some out there, but if I don't like any of them and I want to make my own, I'll probably go ahead and do that. So, overall, um this was a huge success. I'm very happy. Now this will work both for the FlySky i i6 and the i6x. If you don't know how to do the i6x, it's the same exact thing. Just the place of the wire is different. Go back and watch part one to know where your wires are at. And I do apologize for the test wasn't as great as I was hoping it would be. But uh, you know what can I do? That's that's this is this is our hobby. You know, uh, you can go out planned with 50 lipos and then just in your first two minutes break your whole quad and just go back home. So, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.